Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals, such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady, who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosin and host of Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Ashley Dighton, who uh, runs a business called Zaya Active. And we're going to be talking today about the North Saanich area and her business. So first of all, tell me how you ended up here in North Saanich. Uh, well, I grew up in the Deep Cove area, so um, I did move away for a couple of years just to downtown Victoria, and um, it just pulled me back because it's so peaceful and I love the neighborhood atmosphere, and now that I'm a little bit older, it's just nice to be in that quiet, peaceful neighborhood. Do you find that people that you grew up with are moving back as well? I think they are, yeah, especially as um, people are starting to have families and that sort of thing. It's just that nice, um, comfortable, kid-friendly neighborhood that people are looking for. Hmm. So did you, um, where did you go to school then? Um, at Parklands, and um, going way back, I went to Deep Cove Elementary. And do you find, um, because North Saanich is quite spread out, mm -hmm. and Parklands is on the east side of uh, North Saanich. Do you find the kids hang out together after school? Because like when I was growing up, I had a street friends and then I had my school friends. Yeah, so we are pretty spread out. So I find that it's sort of separated into like the Deep Cove North Saanich and then like the Dean Park North Saanich area, um, Ardmore as well. So um, we all did go to school together and, you know, all had that connection. But then outside of school we kind of stuck to our smaller neighborhoods especially at that age when you're not driving around you know and we'll only bike so far really <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so how do you find it here in terms of convenience because um you live in a beautiful area it's very flat you're close to the ocean you're very close to the ferries and the airport yeah. what about um, buying food and stuff like that. Yeah, so if we just need something, um, you know, on the run sort of thing, then the Deep Cove Market is really great for that. It's, you know, five minutes away from me. Um, so really good for, you know, fresh produce and eggs and that sort of thing. Um, for more in-depth grocery shopping, uh, Sydney, of course, is right next door. So that's really great to pop over. And same with, um, they have, you know, all the other amenities like home hardware stores and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Do you go to any of the community events in Sydney? Um, yeah, the Thursday night market is a big one during the summer. I think everyone knows of that and people travel from all over the island, I think, to go to that one. Um, there's also the farmer's market on Saturday mornings at the Saanich Fairgrounds, which is a really great local event. Let's talk about the Saanich Fair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's a big one. How long has that one been around now? Probably over 50 years, I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, they were just celebrating their 52nd or something like that. Um, huge event. I think people all over the island travel for that one, um, whether you're into the farmer's market or the horse show or the other livestock events um, or just for the fair, for the rides and that sort of thing. Yeah, I've been going to that ever since I was little. And I used to compete in the uh, horse show portion of it when I was little as well. Western or English? Um, I started off doing English and then moved uh, more to Western pleasure. And they also have um, those horse uh, carriages. What are they called with the big horses? Uh, the Clydesdales. Yeah. I'm not sure what the driving. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Driving? <laughs> I think so. It's really quite impressive that people still do that, hey? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Do you find um, there, like, it's easy to ride horses up in North Saanich? The, I think the minimum lot size for the majority of Saanich is an acre. Yeah, it was for the longest time. Um, so there's lots of barns and um, riding trails. There's a huge amount of circuits that go through all of North Saanich and Deep Cove, which are great for horseback riding um, and just for, you know, walkers and hikers alike for dog adventures and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it's a great place to um, ride horses and enjoy the community that way. What's the etiquette around horse riding and trails? Um, gosh, I have to think back now to those days. Um, 
the etiquette, we would always try to, you know, stay to the side of the road. And as a driver, go, you know, slow and wide because you never know even, you know, the safest horses around, you just never know. And um, I think when you're on the trails, you know, just to pull over and give sort of that right away, um, whether you are the horse rider or the, the walker or hiker going by, just be aware and courteous of each other. What about with people with dogs? Should they be on a leash, the dog? Um, I think when you're when you see a horse approaching or any other animal for that matter, I think it's best. A lot of our trails here um, they are off leash friendly, so um, absolutely it's okay to have your your friendly, well behaved dogs off the leash. But I think there is just that courteous and safety because they are animals. At the end of the day, you know we don't want any incidents. So yeah. Where do you take your dog for off leash walking up here? Um, mostly Horth Hill is a really good one. It's a good intricate of trails, and um, I think it's probably the most common one in the Deep Cove North Saanich area. Um, there's also the path now that goes around the airport. It's been there for a couple of years now, I guess, and it's a big, um, not far off leash. I would keep, keep on leash there because you're close to the road, but <laughs> um, it's about a 10-kilometer loop around the airport, so that one's really nice. And um, other than that, there's just all nice walking sidewalks and trails through the area that I'd go through. Do you, are you into any of the water sports in the area? Because we are right near the marina. Yes, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm into water sports per se. I'm not an enthusiast. (laughs) But um, we have rented um, a canoe once at the local marina. You can rent canoes, kayaks, all that sort of thing and um, just went around the peninsula and around the marina, so that was really nice. And um, if you are boating or have a boat, then it's really nice just to hop off and you can go. Um, we went over to Brentwood Bay once, you know, around around the water there and had lunch and then scooted back, and it was really nice. And it's quite it's, protected, right? It is, yeah. It's nice and quiet, so it was pretty easy going when you were in the canoe or kayak, which is great. And um, So you kayak to Brentwood Bay from here? No, no, I'm sorry. That was in the boat. Yes. No, no, no. Too far. (laughs) I'd be exhausted. (laughs) Because it's quite a distance. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. And it's beautiful to do it, though, because to see the area from the water, it's such a different perspective. So, yeah. Actually, I was showing homes the other day in Mill Bay and my clients um, took a boat out from Brentwood Bay across and it was 15 minutes. Oh, really? Oh, that's quick. Yeah. So, um, what about wildlife in the water? Oh, we see all sorts of otters and seals, even in the neighborhood. Sometimes we'll see otters crossing the street and it's like, where are you going? I don't know. (laughs) Probably to someone's pond to raid their koi. Probably. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, you know, lots of, um, ducks, seagulls, uh, geese, that sort of thing. And um, I haven't been lucky enough to see any whales or anything like that, but lots of um, sea otters and that sort of thing. So I've been um, boating in this area and I saw, I think it was minke whales. That's a small whale around here. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. And actually it was, there were orcas, I think that were, in this case, they were hunting the minke whale, which wasn't. Oh, no. <laughs> But quite a, quite a lot, and then some porpoises when we were sailing, coming alongside our, our boat, which was really nice. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's so nice when you witness the nature. <laughs> beautiful. Ha, have you um, lived elsewhere outside of um, Victoria? Uh, no, I haven't. No, I lived, um, like I said, downtown sort of hillside area, and that was that's about it. Yeah. Did living downtown make you appreciate what you had up here growing up? Absolutely, yes. Because growing up, I feel like you don't appreciate it if it's just sort of what you're accustomed to. And, um, you know, you want to go and experience the city, so to speak. And, um, yeah, we we came back. <laughs> we missed it. <laughs> I find that with my, like, I have a 15-year-old daughter, and she wants to move to Toronto because we go and visit family, and I think it's a rather romantic notion. Yes. Do you find it safe up here? Oh, very safe. Yeah, that's one of the things that we love about it. You know, you can go out walking. I've never felt intimidated or, you know, in a weird situation or anything. Um, yeah. What about in terms of like bears and cougars? 
Yeah, so there have been several cougar sightings, and that's one thing that you have to listen for and, you know, just be aware of, especially when you're hiking, like, in Horth Hill, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so cougars is a concern for sure. <laughs> and don't wear your earbuds while you're walking. Yes, very true. Yeah, because I think people are essentially unaware of what's going on when they have their earbuds in. They're in their own world. I agree, yeah. Even if you're, um, you know, jogging or walking on the side of the road, I don't I don't think it's a good idea to wear them. You want to hear, you know, cars passing and that sort of thing. So um, I personally never choose to wear earbuds when I'm out. And I like the, you know, the sounds of the environment, and especially when you are up hiking, just to hear the trees and the rain on, on some days like today. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I shared some pictures of you, uh, of my walk this morning and that's exactly what I felt. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's calming. It's very calming. And I, I, I was forest bathing. <laughs> yes. Some days West coast, right? <laughs> that means it was raining a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very wet day today, but <laughs> Okay, so what do you think uh, about the changes happening around here? So as I was driving up McDonald Park, I noticed, you know, you have condos mm -hmm. over there. The high school has now got an IB program, which um, is attracting more international students. And um, we have like smaller lots happening. How is that affecting the neighborhood? Um, I think it's very exciting. I think it's great. Um, I'm definitely, you know, pro development. I think the more people that can, you know, move here and enjoy it, the more amenities that we're going to see popping up. And um, I think the way that things are being um, added and included, they're being done in a way that it's not going to... Um, what's the word yeah negatively impact our community um i don't think that we're going to lose that sense because it's you know why people move here and i think that people really appreciate it and that will continue as it is hopefully <laughs> yeah i think it's done if it's done thoughtfully and well that it's it's good mm -hmm. i agree yeah i think it's good and what about uh people moving here who work in vancouver are you finding that at all yeah absolutely I think, um, well, we're so close to the ferries, first of all, so it's the first kind of place that you might look and admire um, if you are coming over from the mainland. And I think that uh, more people are coming over because just the the lifestyle, you know, they've they've lived in Vancouver for however long and they've experienced that and then they come here and it's just like a sigh of relief almost, you know, it's just that lower island life kind of <laughs> slower paced. I call them havers when they move here. Do, and why is that? Because they pay half the amount of, for the real estate. Oh, yeah, that, that too. That's probably a huge deciding factor. Like a house, like, uh, you know, a 3,000 square foot house with a view of the ocean here is maybe, you know, a couple of million. But in, in Vancouver, it's going to be five or six. Yeah, absolutely. So people who are maybe thinking about retiring, that's kind of a perfect scenario for them. <laughs> And also, we have, I think, a lot of really good builders on the island. We have excellent construction. We have limited areas where we can develop. So North Saanich is one, Central Saanich maybe a bit. And then, um, like, if you look at the density, really, mm -hmm. the next place is probably the West Shore. Yes. I would agree that everything is starting to move out. There is only so much land out here and there's lots of buildings um, popping up and lots of land development. And um, yeah, I think it is slowly starting to, you know, creep into the West Shore and beyond that even. Mm -hmm. And the waterfront too here, I'm finding on the North, on the North Shore. Yes, there's not a lot of lots left out there, I don't think. <laughs> So I have a client who wants to uh, find a place up here uh, and run a cooking school, which I thought was interesting. Oh, I would love to know about that. I could use some some cooking lessons, that's for sure. <laughs> do you find, um, like in terms of entertainment, there's much to do up here? Yeah, I think um, entertainment-wise, I think that we do feed off of Sydney as, you know, the, the next um, community over um, for their restaurants and, and that sort of thing. But there is um, a good amount for us if we are, you know, staying in North Sandwich. Um, we have the beautiful winery and a couple really beautiful restaurants and um, like farm style bistros. So, yeah. Can you name a few of them? 
Of course. Um, the Deep Cove Chalet is probably one of the most known for their fine dining. Um, we have the Deep Cove Winery, which is beautiful. And I heard it was just redone recently. So I haven't been there since they redid it, but looking forward to enjoying that maybe next summer. Um, the Deep Cove Market, which I mentioned earlier for groceries, they actually have a beautiful um, little bistro. You can go and have sandwiches, I think burgers, coffees, that sort of thing. Um, the Roost is a really big one. I think that people know about that one, which is more towards um, Dean Park. But that one is very busy. It's been there for a long time. and very. They've done there. a great job. Yes. Yeah, they have everything in there. Really good pizzas. <laughs> yeah. And... and um, I guess the last thing I just want to touch about is uh, bike riding around here. Yeah, a lot of cycling happens out here. Yeah, so whether, um, you know, it connects to the Lockside Trail or whether you are more um, recreational and you just like to mosey around the neighborhoods, it's a great community for cycling. Do you find too, like I find in my neighborhood, I, I have people who are training for a triathlon, so we have a hilly area. This is a little more flat, but... Do you find that you get groups of cyclists training out here? Yeah, absolutely. Lots of group cycling and lots of, um, I'm seeing more um, people who I think enjoy cycling just as a recreational thing and having the uh, electric bikes for those hills. <laughs> so that's a little different, but I am seeing more of those, which I think is great, right? It, it allows more people to enjoy um, cycling in the area because there are a few really good hills. <laughs> Okay, so if you have more questions about the North Sandwich area, please contact me. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. In the meantime, we're going to be back with Ashley and talking about her business in the fitness industry. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I'm here with Ashley Dighton of Zaya Active. So, what is Zaya Active? So, we are an activewear company, and um, we design, of course, not only clothing for the gym and for your um, fitness, but also for lifestyle and just clothes that make you know you feel good that will move with you um, throughout your day, whether you are working out or whether you know you're running around to the grocery store or whatever wherever life takes you. <laughs> How did you get into using Zaya Wear and becoming a rep? Yeah, so I am very um, active in my personal life. Um, I love the fitness industry, so um, it started to become a bigger part of um, what I do all on the regular basis. And um, I discovered Zaya through Instagram, amazingly. <laughs> and um, for me, it was from the point of view of being a um, a customer where I wanted to, you know, purchase. I'm always looking for new brands to try, and so I tried. Zaya leggings and um, from then on I was like okay how do I get involved with this company because this is an amazing product and as I started to look into it more and do more research I realized you know there's so much more than just a brand and just a great pair of leggings so yeah where are they made um, they're all made mostly overseas in Asia and that sort of thing um, they do you know follow all the steps to make sure that they're made ethically and um, sourcing more organic materials for the products, which is amazing. And um, so are you wearing their stuff right now? Of course I am. Yes, this is our newest um, staple release item. This is our um, parallel tank. Oh, because of the parallel stripes? You got it. We keep it simple. <laughs> and what sort of um, size ranges do you have? Yeah, so that's another reason that I fell in love with this company is we have um, sizes ranging from 0 to 20, which um, amazingly enough is not a common thing to have that um, yeah, range and variety. So yeah, that, that's a pretty amazing thing. I'm very proud of, of Zaya for incorporating everyone and everybody. That's a good word, everybody. So what is the, um, what's the, who's your ideal client? My ideal client is really 
any, mostly women, we do have some menswear, but mostly women who, you know, just want to be comfortable and also stylish, so they don't want to sacrifice their um, style for being comfortable all day long, and clothes that, you know, you can go from the yoga studio to the grocery store to meet friends, to pick up the kids, you know, it'll just take you throughout your entire day. All right, so why don't you show me what Zaya has to sell? Yes, we have all sorts of goodies. So like I was saying, of course, we have the staple, amazing uh, classic legging. And it's this one here. So this is our um, light and tight, it's called, which is our high compression legging, which is a huge fan favorite because of that compression. They just make you feel snug as a bug and nice and secure, and they smooth out all those lines and everything. And they also have pockets on either hip, which is so convenient you know tuck away your phone or your keys or whatever it is um so convenient for the gym but also just for running errands you know to throw your phone in your pocket it looked like there's a key thing in the back is there um there is not a zip on these ones but there is the little pocket in the waistband so if you are just um you know running out the door and you just need to tuck away that house key or something you can pop it right in there Okay, perfect. Okay, what else do you have? All right, so for other leggings, we do have, of course, we have the classic black, but then you need to have a little pattern and fun. So these are our ombre leopards. So the same um, light and tight and support that you're going to get from um, the other leggings, but in the fun pattern. So beautiful. So, you know, I can see my rowing ladies going for that. <laughs> They're beautiful, and they are just the pattern is subtle enough that when you wear it it's not like holy i'm wearing leopard pants but it's just enough you know to be a little different and to have a little fun so you're not in solid black all the time you know? gotcha and same with these ones these are really fun i don't think i could wear um gold <laughs> lemonade gold lemme pants but how 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 well do they come across honestly they look amazing on the white is so solid so it's totally squat proof and solid you're not going to be seeing anything through and um, with the gold it just creates that sort of camouflage that just hides anything that you might want to hide and they are the high compression legging as well so honestly they look amazing on do you ever do you ever do um, designs like personal designs like can you guys do stuff like that um, not so much personal designs but we can um, put logos and that sort of thing on our merchandise Okay, great. Yeah. This one here is very popular with the CrossFit community. This is the kettlebell. So it looks, you know, of course, like a kettlebell. And then it has the Zaya Moon logo. So really fun. And it's the muscle cut tank. For men or women or just women? Um, so far, we only have it for women, but um, they will be seeing it more for men as well. Yeah. I could see women buying for men. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, their husbands, boyfriends all need Christmas presents, birthday presents. You know how tough men are to buy for. So, <laughs> yeah, activewear is a great gift. <laughs> and so do we have any intimates? Of course we do. The sports bra every woman needs, our best friend here. I have a couple different styles. Um, this one here is our uh, luxe edition. So it's very stretchy, very soft and the um it's padded it is padded yeah removable but removable pads so um if you don't like that if you're not comfortable with it you can just pop them out and you know wear it just like that and um or for washing as well sometimes it's nice to remove them if it needs a good wash and um another feature that's amazing about our bras is the wide band at the bottom so when you are um, wearing it and moving around, it's not going to dig into your rib cage. It just sits nice and flat, which is a detail that is, you know, you don't think anything of it until you wear it. And then you're like, wow, this is so comfortable. And that, that is why. <laughs> and then it, I think also it's comfortable on your back. Totally. Yeah, exactly. And we have a couple different back styles. So depending what you like. Um, so this one, of course, is more strappy. And then we also have um, one with the thicker straps, which can be more comfortable. So women prefer this for over the shoulder. Um, so a little bit more support and coverage with a style like this. Um, again, the removable pads and nice wide band at the bottom. And all washable. 
all washable. Yeah, you're gonna wanna hang to dry everything. Um, the dryer is very hard on all this four-way stretch fabric, but everything, it, you know, toss it in the wash, hang to dry, and it's it's good to go. What, what are the price ranges of those? Yeah, so everything ranges from about, um, for our bras, they go from about 40 to 77, I believe, just depending on the style. And for our leggings, they range from about, I think, 70 to 125. Okay, and what do we have here? So here's another top, and this one is our Blossom Chill, it's called, and it has tiny perforations that go throughout the entire top. And what's nice about this one is that, of course, because it is perforated, it keeps you nice and cool, but it also gives you good coverage. It's not so perforated that, you know, it's sheer or you feel exposed at all. So this one's sort of a nice combination of that um, style and also um, function. Yeah, I think that'd be really great for rowing. Hey, rowers. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how do you sell how do you sell these? Yeah, so we're um, an online based company. And then um, I also do a lot of home parties. So you could set up um, if you choose to host a party, then you would earn rewards and free and half price uh, Zaya. And um, if the parties aren't for you, then you can shop online at any time. And I also do um, private shopping events. So lots of ways to check us out. Do you ever, um, this is totally for me, do you ever do something where you would donate whatever the profits would would you would earn to um, an organization? Yeah, actually last month um, I donated 5% of all of our proceeds to the uh, BCSPCA. And then this month for September, um, we're doing 10% to the uh, Childhood Cancer Awareness, which is gonna be through the Cancer Society. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm very proud of that. That's something new that we're doing. Um, and as a rep, I get to choose what sort of um, incentives and uh, contributions we do. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and uh, tell me a bit about your personal um, endeavor right now that you're doing. Oh, yes. So <laughs> this is very exciting and very nerve wracking, but I'm training for my first uh, fitness competition, which is coming up quick. It's four weeks as of yesterday, and um, it's going to be in Vancouver. And then I decided crazily enough to sign up for the one in Calgary as well. So after the Vancouver show, two weeks later, I'm flying to Calgary to compete there as well. So what do you have to do to get ready for that? So you have to um, train at the gym regularly, of course. Um, I've hired a trainer because I, I don't know how to train myself for something so intense. <laughs> um, I have to follow a meal plan very strictly. Everything is weighed and measured and I eat exactly what's on the meal plan and that's it. And um, I have to now do my posing practice. There's a whole posing routine that goes along with it and which is a lot harder than it looks. Like you have to you have to bend and twist in ways that it is not comfortable, <laughs> but you have to make it look like it's effortless on stage. So um, that's a lot of what I'm doing right now basically is, um, you know, working out at the gym, eating, you know, staying on my meal plan and then doing my uh, posing in the heels as well and the bikini. So making sure that everything is feels comfortable as possible. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you find? Um, is it the eating? I think the eating, yeah, and just finding the time to do it all because, it, you know, it's a few hours in the gym every day and then, um, you know, coming home and making sure that your food is ready to go because you're hungry and I got to eat now and making sure that you're well organized. So just to find the time to prepare all your meals so it is at hand is a huge thing. But yes, I think staying on the meal plan, especially, um, you know, through birthday dinners and family dinners and Thanksgiving's coming up and there's lots of treats around all the time. <laughs> yeah, and alcohol, I imagine. Yes, yeah, zero alcohol, so, yeah. And uh, how has it changed the way you perceive yourself? Um, I don't think it's changed it. I think I'm proud of myself for, um, you know, hopefully accomplishing this. I still have four weeks to go, but <laughs> I'm proud of what I've accomplished so far. And, yeah, it just goes to show that you can, you know, do anything that you set your mind to if if I decide to do something, then I know that I can do it. 
So has it changed your body composition as well? Absolutely, yeah. I um, I don't weigh myself because it's not necessary, but um, just from the clothes I wear and how um, I see myself in photos, you can tell that my my muscle mass is significantly different um, where my size itself really hasn't changed, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You're big, you're stronger, you're more muscle. Absolutely, yeah. Well, as a former phys ed teacher, I'm interested because uh, I found, like I used to work out five times uh, a day, five times a week. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I was one of those phys ed teachers who just got in there with the students. Yeah, wow, good for you. Yeah, but I found after, the hard part is the after part, after you're finished with the all the exercising, like during the summer, during the two months, and I would get out of shape and gain the weight really quickly. Yes, yeah. So that's something um, that I've talked with my trainer about, and there is um, a reverse plan that goes into it that's just as important as actually getting into it and following the steps up to show day. There's the post-show day and kind of recovering from that. That's just as important. So, I imagine two um, competitions closely in a row is hard too. Yeah, apparent, it's doable, of course, um, but it will be tough because you are taking your body to that point for the first show day, and then, um, you know, I'll get to have a little cheat meal more just for my mental health, <laughs> um, and then I'll sort of go right back into that prep, so it's a bit hard um, on the body, but mostly hard on the mind, I think, yeah, just to keep yourself kind of in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to peak twice, almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, I'm interested to hear how it goes. Probably we will be airing around the time. So what dates are we looking at? Yeah, so um, show day number one is October 19th. That's in Vancouver. And then show day number two is November 2nd in Calgary. Okay, so stay tuned and watch Ashley. For more information on the North Saanich area, you can talk to me. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camos. And, and if you want information on the Zaya clothing line contract, Ashley, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so the easiest way is just through social media, whether you find me on Facebook or Instagram um, or on my website, which is www.ashleydighton.com. And that's A-S-H-L-E-Y-D-I-G-H-T-O-N. Okay, take care. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Welcome to the neighborhood. We hope you have had some insight into West Coast living. If you know of someone or some place that should be highlighted in our podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Please go to VancouverIslandTime.com and click on our Connect button. See you next week on Vancouver Island Time with Jane Johnston.